News 25 is brought to you by Dr. George Leakes, Pahrump's optometrist since 1990, offering full spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Nye County has a bump up in COVID cases, and News 25 honors our local truckers. News starts now. This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local coverage you can count on. Two officers return with positive virus tests. It's Tuesday, April 21st. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Well, the Nye County Sheriff's Office is taking additional steps to protect its officers and the public from COVID-19. Just hours after announcing that a staff member at the Nye County Detention Center had tested positive for COVID-19, the agency announced another confirmed case, this time within the patrol division. As you are aware, the Nye County Sheriff's Office reported over the weekend a positive COVID test among detention center staff. When your law enforcement becomes compromised by COVID, that inhibits our ability to serve you, the community, and compromises our ability to do so safely. Today, we can confirm Monday, April 20th, that we have a positive COVID case among patrol staff as well. Over the last 30 days, Sheriff Sharon Worley has implemented numerous procedures in an effort to reduce the risk of our staff contracting COVID-19. At this point, with a positive confirmation in the detention center and a positive confirmation in our patrol staff, additional measures are being implemented to ensure that our staff are able to continue to serve and protect you, the community. All deputies, as they are interacting with the public, will be utilizing masks. Deputies' schedules have been adjusted to minimize exposure with each other and to reduce the risk of spreading this among our agency. We will continue to update you on changes as they occur. Well, truck drivers are essential to our economy, helping to keep store shelves stocked and warehouses full of products we buy. In the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, truck drivers are more important than ever, and many are working long hours to keep up with consumer demand for everything from lumber and paint to bread and toilet paper. News 25 spoke to two local drivers about life on the road and the greater appreciation they're receiving. I came from a different part of the, the trucking world. I used to do a bunch of dry freight, which is, you know, paper, just mainly paper, flour, sugar. Now I'm actually in the food part. Mm -hmm. And the response from like, from how everything's been with this, with this virus is just, it's a, it is kind of overwhelming because uh, they've, they've lifted hours of service on us so we can hurry up and get to our deliveries. Yeah. And it's just, it's just been real crazy. For me, I have what they call it a regional dedicated run and then so I mostly run in the same area on this side of the western United States and I mainly run from Salt Lake City, Utah down to Los Angeles, California. I know that when I go to Los Angeles now with everything going on during the pandemic I can usually run across Los Angeles pretty much any time of the day without really any problems. The shippers are kind of excited to get their stuff out. It's, it's more the receivers, people people getting the food, they're they're really excited. Yeah. Because, you know, they're like, we're here, we've been waiting on this, you know. Depending on where we go and things, um, a lot of our shippers will, will re reward us with like, you know, an extra case here for the driver or something here or something there. Yeah. Um, different people, you stop at a truck stop, you have people come up and greet you, you know, thank you for what you do, especially during these times. Uh -huh. I know, I know definitely before, this is all happened. We, we didn't really get that a whole lot, but now that now that this is all happening and things, people are realizing that oh hey, without without truck drivers, you know where 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 would we be? What would we have? You know, it it definitely seems like they're a little more generous to the trucks now because they know what we're doing and they like to eat. <laughs> there's there's been a little more respect. Yeah. And there's a lot of people in rest areas and on bridges, you know, saying thank you truckers, waving flags. That's awesome. Yeah, well, the whole ind industry, I think, is working a lot better without that hours of service. Yeah, uh, we could we could drive unlimited hours now, and they and you know the federal government just says drive within reason. I mean, now we could we could drive six, seven, maybe eight hours, take a three-hour nap, 
get up, do it again. You know, actually work when our bodies want to, rest when our bodies want to. Works so, so much easier. It's something I love to do. It, it runs in my family. Um, it's something I've wanted to do since I was a little kid yeah. and things. So it's, I love doing it. Um, but there, there are a lot of people that consider it a, a hero type job. I know a lot of people think of us truck drivers as heroes and you know, we, we as drivers really appreciate that and it means a lot to us. We really appreciate what he does. We threw a little surprise for him when he got home today since he got delayed coming home. Yeah. And it's, it's just really nice to be able to have someone who can do what he does. He doesn't normally hear a lot of appreciation and he's been hearing it a little bit more. Without us, you know, America would be completely different and things. So I think I see us as, um, you know, America's backbone and things. And I just want to let everybody know that if you guys, and if anybody ever gets a chance to thank a truck driver, you know, greet them, appreciate them, I definitely think that would be worth worth the time. It would definitely make uh, a driver's day. You know, just, just 30 seconds to say, hey, thank you for what you do and things, you know, we appreciate it. Even that can make, make, make a driver's day the absolute best. And thank you so much for what you guys do. See, every cloud has a silver lining. We are appreciating so many people who do so many jobs around our country. News 25 will return right after this break. News 25 is brought to you by Star Nursery, your garden's partner for every blooming thing. Well, welcome back. Oil prices plummet as the demand for oil continues to drop. More than a million people could lose their jobs in the oil industry. And Rite Aid says it will expand the availability of on-site COVID-19 testing. Angela Miles has more. Topping our news, the tumbling price of oil. As the nation comes to a standstill, West Texas crude oil futures contracts traded down to pennies and then turned negative on Monday for May. The contract for June remains positive. According to AAA, the demand for gasoline has fallen nearly 60% with fewer Americans on the road. Oil producers are running out of places to store oil with a glut already on the market. The national average for a gallon of gasoline, $1.81 to start the week. Gas is below $1 in Colorado, Kentucky, Mississippi, and New York. Taking a look at oil stock, shares of Chevron and ExxonMobil traded lower on Monday. It's projected up to 1 million people could lose their jobs in the oil industry. A couple of bright spots in the market. Rite Aid plans to expand its on-site testing locations for COVID-19. Thanks, Angela. Well, a man has confessed to marking multiple sites in Death Valley National Park with graffiti. Charges are pending. The graffiti that included Steve and Lacey was found on rocks. A well, historic structures in Echo Canyon, Butte Valley, Homestake Dry Camp, and Crankshaft Junction. Park rangers had some leads pointing to the man's identity and appealed to the public for more information on April 14th. The man who confessed said that his acquaintance saw the story on social media and brought it to his attention. Steve, a resident of British Columbia, called a tip line himself on April 17th. The following day, he spoke with the investigating park ranger, confessed and apologized. They say Lacey is blameless because she's a dog. Charges have been filed again, have not been filed yet, and the man and the penalties could include a fine and or restitution charges. The man's cooperative attitude will likely be a mitigating factor. Park rangers are still patrolling Death Valley National Park during the current temporary closure due to the coronavirus. Through traffic is now closed on CA 190 and Daylight Pass Road from Beatty. Well, the COVID-19 shutdown of schools nationwide had many educators and school districts scrambling to come up with a plan A and plan B. A small virtual academy exploded practically overnight, absorbing more than 100,000 children and rescuing the school year for families across the nation. Kim Martinez explains how they accomplished this amazing feat. Good morning, boys and girls. Let's go ahead and get started with our day. If you are ready, let me see two thumbs up. I could have never imagined if you would have asked me three, you know, six months ago that we would have moved 100,000 plus students online overnight or over a weekend. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Sky. 
Amaya Daniel. Amid the COVID-19 chaos, Dr. Antonio Roca, who was running a much smaller online program for Academica charter schools, jumped into action, getting 5,000 teachers in place and trained to host virtual classrooms. Ten states have about 200 schools and over 100,000 students. The Academica charter school system had a nearly perfect response to the crisis, rescuing the school year for their children. Schools were closed on Friday, announced closures on Friday, and Monday we opened for business online. So was that for every one of your schools? Like you did not miss a day of school because of this? We did not miss a day of school. Let me see your notes. Go ahead and show them to me in the camera. I want to see how you're doing. We actually went to live online instruction and the students would report to class on Monday with the uniforms on. Oh my gosh, look at you all. Yes. Yes, great job. Like they would if they were reporting to AP Biology first period, uh, their AP Biology teacher was, uh, was there waiting for them. We still have a total of 10 within the Petri dish. What happened to species A? Species A thrived, like it kept on increasing. They thrived. So how did Academica accomplish all of this practically overnight? Well, they saw the writing on the wall and they met the needs of their students in advance. We started um, in really in mid-February. The first thing we did was we sent out a survey to all of our families. Did they have internet at home? Did they not have internet at home? Did they have devices? With many of their kids on the free and reduced lunch program, the schools had to get out thousands of devices to families in need, which they accomplished beautifully. And we have many schools that are attending a hunt that are reporting 100% attendance. The students are getting a full day's worth of instruction. We're teaching art, we're teaching music, physical education is part of what we're doing online. And some of the students that were going to a brick and mortar will now want to stay online. Do you, do you anticipate any of that happening? Yeah, I do. I, I do think that you can't unring this bell. Now that they've been fully exposed, at least to our model, where you have live instruction, occurring, uh, I think we'll want to stay. Kim Martinez reporting. Thanks so much, Kim. We'll return right after this break. This segment of the news is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyers, Nye County's injury attorneys. Don't get bullied by insurance companies. Call Jason Ernest and bully them back at 775-727-9500. Well, with so much focus on the COVID-19 pandemic, it may be easy to forget about other health concerns. But according to Dr. Dan Allen of Cleveland Clinic, it's never a good idea for people with chronic health issues to put them on the back burner. He says keeping in touch with your doctor is important now as ever before. There's a lot of things we can do virtually or through the telephone, uh, you know, whether it be high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, various lab, you know, monitoring situations, talking about lifestyle, adjusting medications, you know, making sure that you're getting set up for screenings once it's safer to go out. So there's a lot of problems that don't disappear just because we have a new threat. A recent statement from the American College of Cardiology urges people to always call 911 in the event of a suspected heart attack or stroke. The guidance was issued after a recent study showed fewer people seeking emergency care since the rise of COVID-19. Dr. Allen says even if your medical problem is non-life threatening, you should always seek out your health care provider when a concern arises. He recommends calling your doctor who will be able to determine if an in-person visit is in your best interest. Interest. We're weighing the benefit of seeing them in person uh, versus the risk of them being exposed potentially. Now the office is clean, we keep social distancing in the office, the patient will be in the exam room by themselves, so we do what we can to minimize their risk of having to come in and be seen. Dr. Allen says you should keep taking your medications, eat a healthy diet, exercise, and get plenty of sleep to lessen the chance of having a chronic health issue flare up. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. 
All right, let's take a look outside on that weather cam and see what's happening out there. Lots of clouds in the sky, but I see some blue peeking through. We'll find out more after this break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hello and welcome back to News 25. I'm Michael Donahue with today's weather. In Las Vegas, we had a high of 80 degrees, a low of 61, up to 91 with a low of 68 in Death Valley, 79 a low of 53 in Amargosa, 76 52 in Beatty, 66 40 over in Goldfield, 64 a low of 38 in Tonopah, 68 42 in Carson City, 72 a low of 41 in Fallon, and 71 a low of 44 up in Fernley. Now in today in Pahrump, we saw mostly sunny skies. Our high today was 78 degrees. Winds coming out of the northwest up to 14 miles per hour, 27% for our humidity, and our sunrise at 6.02 this morning. Now for tonight, we're going to see some mostly clear skies. Our low is going to be 53 degrees. It is 76 outside currently with winds out of the north-northeast up to 8 miles per hour. Humidity at 38% and 723 tonight expected for our sunset. Now looking ahead to that seven day, pretty much going to be seeing a lot of sunny skies through the week. Really, we're only going to be seeing some partly cloudy skies over this weekend. Now we also do still have some high winds on Wednesday up to 14 miles per hour and up to 16 miles per hour on Thursday. Now temperature wise, it is starting to get pretty hot outside from Wednesday to Friday. We're going to be hanging out in those mid to high 80s between 85 and 88 degrees. From Saturday and Sunday, we're going to be seeing highs of 91. And then Monday and Tuesday, we're going to be seeing highs up to 93 degrees. Now our overnights are also starting to get a little bit warmer. On Wednesday, we're going to be seeing a low of 58 degrees. Then from Thursday to Sunday, we're going to be hanging out in those low 60s between 60 and 64. Then up to lows of 67 and 68 by next Monday and Tuesday. So it is starting to warm up quite a bit outside. And now with that, we're going to throw it back to the desk with Deanna. Oh my gosh, it's getting warmer after wearing some sunscreen for sure. Well, if you got your mail a little late yesterday on the west side of town, it's because there was an accident with a mail truck. Luckily, no injuries were reported. We got these pictures from Amy Nelson. Police and medics responded to a two-vehicle crash at the intersection of Barney Street and Prospector Lane. Both drivers, which includes a U.S. mail truck, declined to be transported to local medical facilities. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell from all of us here at KPVM-TV and Ace Country Radio. Have a great night. See you back here tomorrow.